During times when engines were not designed so much by computers, engineers had to over-engineer stuff to make it reliable enough. Otherwise there was a possibility of not reaching the lifespan they planned. The Volvo Red Block was born in 1974 and is just the case of a properly engineered piece of an engine. Appropriately named after the engine block color, the Volvo Red Block is a famous slanted engine, a successor to the renowned Volvo B18 and B20 overhead valve series. This was the first overhead cam attempt, made in all sorts of versions, carbureted, mechanically and electronically fuel injected, naturally aspirated and turbocharged, 8 valve and 16 valve. All red blocks had a cast iron bottom end paired to an aluminum head and most of them had an 80mm stroke crankshaft. There is a reason why they have a solid community. They appeared in front-engine rear-wheel drive models such as A240, 740 and 940 series and provide certain benefits to owners. First of all, they are relatively easy to find and cheap to purchase. Moreover, they offer a bulletproof lifespan and a robust design. Finally, they really like cranking up the boost and even some naturally aspirated units share strong parts of the turbo versions. Easy maintenance, long life and tuning friendliness all at the same time. For sake of your time, this video will cover turbocharged models only, as those are more interesting, more capable, the ones you should pick for the best bang for buck ratio. It started in 1981 with a B21 engine mated to a Garrett T3 turbo, adding 0.45 to 0.62 bar of boost to the ET and FT engines respectively. The larger B23 2.3 liter version was nearly the same thing, except for the larger bore from 92 to 96 mm. It featured the same size crank journals, same beefy M connecting rods, and distributor location on the driver's side. The crankshaft is forced, and power levels of 200 horsepower are a piece of cake for it, with a simple boost increase and some free flowing exhaust. Volvo seems to use intercoolers sufficient enough for tunes up to 300 horsepower, so not that many supporting mods are needed. Besides, there is a way to recognize the B23 from the B21 as the larger displacement block does have water plugs on both sides. The second generation of the Red Block came along in 1985 when they ditched the B21, a B19 became a B200 and the B23 was succeeded by a B230. Try to not mix these two up as the B230 is thoroughly different. First, the main journals are smaller and an actual bearing is located in the center. Furthermore, the connecting rods are now longer by 7mm and also weaker, downgrade from 13 to 9mm in the narrowest width of the rod. Both of these improvements cause a low potential of the B230 and figures of 250 horsepower are about the most the stock bottom end can handle. There are theories that because of the small main bearings, there is a crankshaft flex in a place of rod number 1 causing it certain death under high boost numbers. These rods can be killed in heavy tuned naturally aspirated builds, so be cautious. The B230 does have a cast crank, but they are not known to fail on daily driven builds. It is said that the B23 cam likes revs a bit more, while the B230 cam offers stronger low end torque. The 
final major revision of the red block occurred in 1989. The B23 had 62mm mains and 54mm rod journals, which were reduced in the second gen to 55 and 49mm respectively. For the latest iteration, it was enlarged up again to 62.5mm with the smaller 49mm Conrod Began diameter. Most importantly, the rods were 13mm once again, raising the potential back to the B23 territory. In addition, from 1993, all squitters were introduced, cooling those pistons down from the bottom. There is no forged crankshaft in an automotive triple digit B series. However, they are not that fragile and are able to keep up with increased boost. Do you want to enlarge the displacement? A forged Marine Volvo Penta AQ151 or 171 crankshaft is a solution. It offers an 86mm stroke, resulting in a 2.5 litre engine with the standard bore. It may be an overkill for a street build, but it is an interesting solution for racing purposes. The engine also may vibrate quite a bit, as only the newer 16 valve engines did feature balancing shafts. The stock cast crank is plenty strong, up to 600 horsepower and 7500 rpm setup. Another possible upgrade would be a K block from the B230K, which, however, is a naturally aspirated engine with a flat, no CC cylinder head, the 1631 code number. It has got internal webbing for strength, redesigned thrust bearing, but the same 9mm con rods. Just for your information, the K motor is the only interference engine with the 8 valve head. Heads, there were six various versions of them altogether. The 160, the so called little head, was used on the earliest B21. The 398 was just slightly different, found on the B19, B21, and B23, both made with big and small cooling passages. The 405 was a so called big head with big cooling passages installed on the Volvo Penta and even racing versions of the 240 Turbo usually manufactured with Kjetronic injector holes made for the B23 units. A standard red block head is the 530, a very similar exhaust and intake port as the 160 and 398, and always using the small water jackets used on the B200 and B230. The 531 as the big head is considered the best, based on the 530 with small cooling routes. The ports were modified, it had different springs, cam, and allegedly is able to add 10 to 15 horsepower alone compared to the 530 head. All of them have 44mm intake and 35mm exhaust valves. The last one, the 631, known as the Hiron head, has no combustion chambers in it. As mentioned previously, these engines really like tuning, and so about 200 horsepower is easily achievable with a slight boost increase, free flowing exhaust, and a calibrated boost gauge. It should read about 11 to 12 psi for something around 190 to 210 horsepower. A 15 psi boost will get you in the 230 to 260 horsepower ballpark, and if you have the 530 head, the 300 horsepower should be no issue with just minor mods. From there, you really want to pay attention to head improvements like a cam, oversized valves, and twin or stiffer valve springs, like from a Ford 4.6. Either you got a heavily tuned 8 valve or a 16 valve head will provide the same thing with some space for further upgrade, porting and more gains. The most important thing to do is stage O. Check and fix everything you can to prevent any unnecessary failures of the hardware. Other than that, just enjoy your good old Volvo. Cheers! <laughs>